This game is played by adults going over adult content. You've been warned. Welcome to Yes Please, the D&D podcast companion to Check Please. This series of podcasts take place in between the episodes of the main Check Please series and go into more detail and depth about specific people and events. This episode takes place in canon a little after the events of episode 54. It is evening of February 15th, Estrella Day. Soul finds themselves on a ferry heading toward the mainland to the port city of Yugas, and they're sitting there below decks with the rest of the party and kind of leaning there with their head on Gro's shoulder. It's very cuddly. You're just sort of taking this moment to settle down after all that bullshit just went down. It was, in fact, bullshit. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, apparently, Levette's whole family is dead now. Oh, maybe her mom will be eventually? <laughs> maybe. It's hard to say. Hard to say. <laughs> Or, you know, the entire gnomish race is gone now. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, that's unlikely. I hope so. One drider can't kill an entire city of gnomes. But we did burn down a big section of it on accident. Oh, yeah, that also happened. And, you know, there's a pretty large fire now in the slums well, we of the did. town. Lavette did. Correct. <laughs> Lavette is now a mass arsonist. Jesus Christ. We were the bad guys today, and it was awful, and Mm -hmm. I still feel dirty. Luckily, you have your husband there with his head on your head and probably a hand holding your hand that's resting on both of your legs. God, it's so good. And he's just sitting there in silence, just breathing. He took a hard day today. So... Hmm? Sorry, Um, I must have nodded off. Oh, I'm so sorry I woke you up. It's okay. He chuckles a bit. What's going on? Nothing. I guess I... It's just nice to have you here. I just feel bad that you feel so worn out. It's not your fault. I just... I wasn't prepared for combat as much as I expected, I suppose. You really did help us out, though. Thank you. No, you were the one that discovered their weakness. I just paid attention. That's because you're smart. (laughs) Lifetime of studying, I guess. Well... I guess it's been paying off. Hmm. You did good today. He turns and gives you a kiss on the top of your head. Mm. So did you. I think you made the best of a bad situation. I'm just hoping it doesn't have to happen like this again, really. I hope so, too. (sighs) So, now you've got to experience some adventuring. (laughs) What do you think? I think that, um... I think that I may not be cut out for this kind of life. That's okay. Come March, we'll settle down and everything will be okay. He turns and looks at you. Do you mean it? I do. I'm going to protect everyone. You see like a little bit of moisture in his eyes as he smiles at you. You okay? Yeah, I just, I'm really looking forward to, well, to us. Soul kind of nuzzles into his shoulder more. He gives you another kiss on the top of your head. (sighs) I'll just handle things from the sidelines, but I'll still be helping people out. Just not as actively, I don't think. <laughs> and I think that's that's for the best. Me too. You don't need to be putting yourself out in so much danger anymore. Yeah, we'll be safe and sound at home, and I'll have those who I trust going out and about and assisting the world where it needs to be assisted. Mm-hmm. And you'll you'll have gotten the protectorship abilities from your mother and we'll be perfectly safe. Mm-hmm. I just have one last thing to take care of and then we're all good. I just I, I kind of feel bad for um, the guy we're going up against really. You feel I mean I guess it's good to be confident but I mean, you really shouldn't feel no, bad. No, not because I'm coming after him in any way. Why he is the way he is really. When I was in that other world I saw His last moments before that world uh, got eaten, whatever you want to call it, he did everything he could to unite people and make everyone safe. He made that world better, and he was tricked by the enemy and became a monster, and everything he wanted and had was right there, and then the second he had it, it 
it was taken away and destroyed in front of his eyes and I don't even know why he's with the enemy if that's the case. I really, really want to know why. That doesn't make any sense. But maybe, maybe he's being controlled somehow. I wonder. I just, I pity him, really. Well, don't forget that he's still one of the enemy. I know. I just wish I could, I don't know, knock some sense into him instead. I don't believe that fighting's always the way. I think words are far more powerful. But maybe I'm still naive. Don't ever <sighs> lose that, all right? Okay, I promise. That hope is, is precious. I love you, soul. I love you too, girl. He puts an arm around you, kind of pulls you into a hug. Mm, definitely enjoying that hug. Super cuddly. You get the sense that he's drifting off into sleep again. Gotcha. I'll be his support today. I'll enjoy the warmth. Mm. It may be closing in to mid-February, but I imagine it's still pretty chilly here for a while. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit cold. Especially, I mean, on the ocean, it's not really that warm, so... Yeah. At least we're inside the boat. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah? Make a will save, please. Okay. Well, that's a 27? Okay. You feel a, sort of a... It's weird to describe. You feel kind of a tickle in the back of your mind. Like... I yeah, <laughs> it, it, you you sort of like the hairs in the back of your neck sort of stand up, and you kind of just get this weird brain tingle for a second, and then it goes away. Uh, I rub the back of my neck, I guess. Okay, you rub the back of your neck, and you feel a bit better. Whatever mm. it was, must have been just a passing thought. All right, I kind of look out to the party. Lovett's probably resting on that bench still with the rose I gave her. Yeah, personally, I'm, I imagine Lovett like curled up in sort of a fetal position but yeah. with her eyes open and she's just like looking at the rose I feel bad for her but I'm also mad at her mm -hmm. I have a lot of complex feelings towards Lovette most of them aren't really good <laughs> but Soul always has this innate desire to want to see the good in people so they're hoping it's just their imagination <sighs> I told Alec a week but it really it's only been four days but we <sighs> I wish I had a way to contact him. Dang sorcerers being powerful. <laughs> I look over to Karis and Petra sitting down on the floor, I think. Mm -hmm. On the floor. In my mind, I imagine that Karis has one of Petra's cloaks wrapped around her. Aww. And she's nodded off as well. Is pretty much everyone asleep? I'm going to go ahead and guess that everyone's kind of in a low, either sleeping or in like a state of low power because of the events that has gone on today. That and after, after being hasted, everyone is fatigued. Gotcha. So you are all tired. Can people see if I use modify memory? It's got verbal and somatic components, so you do have to move your hands around and say something. All right. I'm going to wait until it looks like everyone's asleep asleep, just in case my words mm -hmm. wake someone up, you know? Yeah, I mean, not everyone's actually asleep asleep. Some people are just sitting there. I'm going to wait on that one, then. Okay. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh... The thoughts and plans have started in my head, at least. Mm -hmm. If I can just make everyone happy, things would be so much simpler. <sighs> I'll run a boat for a while. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll try to sleep sleep. Okay. At least enough to let grow rest properly. All right, so you want to try to sleep? Yep. All right, so you close your eyes and lean back and attempt to sleep. You have a dream. Okay. In your dream, mm -hmm. you are in a room... You are sitting in a comfortable chair. You're reading something, but it's sort of fuzzy. Like, it's not really anything actually readable. But you know that in your mind you're reading something. Okay. You hear a noise, and you look up from your book, and you see Gro. He's mm -hmm. standing there. He's smiling at you. You feel a sense of safety and warmth. He walks over, kneels down in front of the chair you're sitting in, and he reaches a hand out and touches your stomach. And at oh. that point... What? How, how big is my stomach at that point you look in this down, dream? You look down and you see that your stomach is large and d distended. In this dream, you're much more pregnant. Gro asks you in a gentle voice, how are they doing today? Um, uh, I, I don't know. I haven't talked. I don't feel bad. I'm okay. I think they're okay. <laughs> Good. I can't wait to meet them. Well, they'll be babies for a while. <laughs> I hope they'll be good. I'd like you to make another will save. 
Oh, okay. It's a 29. Woo! It's good ass rolls. Well, I have a plus 12 to my will save. No, it was a 15 and the 17 is what I'm happy with the, the nat rolls there. So okay. you feel another tickle in the back of your brain. Like that same itching sensation with your hair in standing my dream. up. In your dream, yeah. The hair standing up in the back of your neck. And your dream sort of starts to lose focus, like everything kind of fades out a little bit. Okay, I'm going to try to rub my neck again yeah, okay. in my dream? Yeah, <laughs> so you, you you know, yeah, you kind of reflexively like rub the back of your neck again and you feel a bit better. But when you sort of come to, you are seated at a table. It's a long table and there are lots of other people at it. Okay. They're all wearing masks. You've oh, seen these people again. before. They're all wearing masks, and you notice that in your dream, you're also wearing the same kind of mask. It's sort of just like a blank white porcelain mask with just eyes cut into it. Okay. Creepy? (laughs) Yeah. So uh, there's only eye holes, basically. And yours, of course, yours only has one eye hole, actually. Rude. (laughs) Right? Isn't that rude? I think it's rude. Why don't I get to use both of my eyes? Both of my eyes work! Mm Mm-hmm. I'm sitting in a chair, a comfy mm-hmm. chair. You're sitting you're sitting in a in a normal chair, like a wooden chair at a okay. long table. There are seven other people seated at the table and they are all kind of looking over to you. They're murmuring like they're saying things, but it's not intelligible what they're saying. Does any of these people look like Glarv as a human? You're not sure cuz they're all wearing masks and they all have generally humanoid bodies and shapes and sizes. You can't even tell if they're male or female. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, like okay. they're just they're just very generic human shapes. But all of our masks look the same other than mine having only one eye. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, no wonder I'm standing out. <laughs> <laughs> and you feel like a tightness around your lap. My lap? Mm-hmm. So you if you look down and you see that there are chains holding you to your chair. Can I push them off? You try to move them and they become tighter and tighter. And it begins to kind of hurt. It has how tight they're becoming. It's like they're tightening okay, on their I own. I stopped touching them. Well, <laughs> the murmurs get louder, but you still can't understand what they're saying until you wake up with a start. You startle yourself awake, and you're going to have cold sweats. Fuck. It is now dark out. The sun is set. You have no idea what time it is, but it's probably some point between the 15th and 16th in the night. You have the urge to not go back to sleep. Is Gross still asleep? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Looks like he's resting comfortably. All right. On me, or...? He's leaning back against the wall behind him. Okay. I'll try to move out of his area as quietly as possible. Do you need stealth or anything? No. Okay. You can... Escape artist? (laughs) (laughs) If you'd like to roll him, you can. No, I'm just being silly. So I get out of his way. I kind of see if everyone's asleep yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like everyone else in the party is out. Well, I know what I'm going to (laughs) do. I'm going to modify Karis's memories. Okay. You cast Modify Memory on Karis. What would you like to do? You can change, I believe, five minutes. Modify as many as five minutes of their memories. You can either eliminate Um, all memory of an event, allow the subject to recall with perfect clarity an event that it already experienced, change the details of an event that they already experienced, or implant a memory of an event that they never experienced. This is a tough one, because mm-hmm. I don't know how much of Karis' personality I'm going to change with this. Mm-hmm. And i got to be careful, because her sister still has her own memories. So, if I'm remembering correctly, she had mentioned that she had no memory of parents or anything. Or at least they weren't around for very long of her childhood. Yeah, she doesn't really remember much of her childhood. I'm going to give that back to her. Okay, you're going you're gonna to give her a five-minute memory of what? Of, like, recalling her parents? Yeah. Of her actual parents? Yes. Okay. No lies yet. Okay. How long does that take me to do it? One round. One round. Okay, it's one, so, like... It's a standard action to cast. Okay. Well, sorry, no, it's a one-round action to cast. Does she need to do a save or anything, or...? Yes, yeah, she gets a save. She gets a will save to negate it. And your DC on that is going to be your charisma bonus... So, 4 plus the level of the spell, plus 10. So your DC on that's 18. hmm And she gets a saving throw to negate. But she is asleep, so she is going to go ahead and try to make that will save. 
and you won't know if it succeeds until the following morning. We'll see if she'll tell me anything. On the other hand, I'm going to, since I have another spell, I'm going to change some of Lovette's memories of the symbols. Okay. And you try to change the initial event of Lovette learning those, reading those runes, and just trying to change what they are so that Lovette misremembers them. Now, remember, yep. they are still written down in Lovette's yeah. obsession log. I'll take care of that another day, I think. I don't want to just <laughs> erase it right now. Okay. As much as it would be very easy to, mm-hmm. it would just be a couple pages, right? Yeah. Can I try to steal her obsession log from her while she's asleep? That is a sleight of hand check. Oh shit, do I even have that? Ugh, that's not a very good bonus. I'll wait. Yeah, I don't want to risk it right now. Okay. I'll wait for now. Alright. But maybe she'll think that she wrote them down incorrectly or something. Maybe she'll change them. I'll just wait and see what happens in the morning, I guess. Mm Mm-hmm. But since... I really don't want to go to sleep. I think I'll go up and get some fresh air. All right. You step out of the hold and get up onto the deck. The air up here is not entirely uncomfortable. It is brisk, and it does actually kind of refresh you a bit. That's good. Below decks, for as comfy as it was, it was a bit crowded and cramped. The air was a bit stifled. (laughs) All right, and you hear the water, rather, as the ship is cutting through it. The ferry is driven by a couple of large sails, and what few people are on duty right now don't really pay any attention to you. I'm going to make my own northern lights while I'm up there. Okay. You start creating, so like, gonna... illusor- illusory auroras into the air. I think it's kind of a like artistic hobby <laughs> of souls, to be honest. Mm-hmm. They like watching pretty lights, and those kind of colors coincide to what they like. So they just kind of stand next to the edge of the boat, and they're just creating their own aurora borealis there. They look around. Uh, you said none of the crewmen really noticed or cared what I was doing? No, they're not. You're just a traveler, just a passenger, so they're not really going to bother you in any way. Unless you look like you need help with something, they're going to kind of give you your own space. Gotcha. I'm going to rub the back of my neck again. Okay. So as you rub your back of your neck and you're looking up at this aurora you made, you hear something. You hear a voice that is sort of coming from everywhere around you at once. Like the person speaking directly to you. Is it like sending or...? It could be like a sending spell, yeah. It sort of sounds like that. Like it's coming from a a distant place. Okay. But it's sort of centered on your... But it's centered on your ear, essentially. Just one of them or both? No, both. Okay. Yeah, it's it's centered on on your ability to hear. So it's, it's not obstructed by any stretch, but it is... Definitely not a natural voice. Okay. It sounds masculine, generally. And what the voice says is, you enjoy those lights, don't you? Um, yes. Who is this, and how do you know what I'm doing? Did that work? (laughs) I'm a friend. I don't know your voice. That's true. Let me make my acquaintance, then. Okay. I'm... Someone who has your best interests at heart. I know that may be difficult for you to trust based on what's been happening in your life. Are, are you from the Church of Eden or something? <laughs> no, not quite. Well, okay, you may continue speaking. But those, those people can be a bit much, can't they? Yes, they are. I've wanted to speak with you for a while, but it's never been possible before. What do, you, what do you mean? Well, I think I think something has happened recently to allow the connection to work properly. And I'm very glad it has, because I've been meaning to speak with you. There's some very important business that we need to discuss. Does this voice sound like Larv? No. No? No. Um, are, are you from my village? Or are you from the Emerald Forest? I... Where I'm from is not truly important. It is to me. (laughs) What I feel is more important is the warning that I have come to bring you. Okay. I believe that you're being deceived. By who? Soul kind of whips their head in the direction of down below, instinctively. Mm -hmm. I believe you're being deceived by Solicity. 
My mother? Yes. That's not what I was anticipating you to say. Voice? How are you still talking to me? How do you have so many sendings? Oh, this this isn't a sending. What is this? This is a direct connection I've made with you. It's difficult to do, and I have tried to do this many times, but something's been stopping it. I'm glad that I finally was able to reach you. I was concerned that it was Solicity's magic. My mom prevented you from talking to me. I believe so, yes. Probably to prevent me from telling you what I am trying to tell you. My mom has my best interest in mind. Do you really believe that? There's a second too long of hesitation. (laughs) Yes. Yes. This protectorship, there's more to it than you realize. There are stakes at play that you aren't aware of yet. If you're gonna tell me it's about staying in the village for a very long time, I already know. I get it. It's just the way things are. It's the way they've always been, but it's not the way they have to continue. What do you mean? Are you saying I could keep traveling and still be a protector? Yes. Oh. I'm saying that the power that Solicity is trying to send to you is not a blessing. It's a curse. It's a shackle. It's chains. Uh, Well, (laughs) curses can be removed. Not these kind. They cut deep. I have a question for you. Yes? Voice? (laughs) Elves live a long time. Have you ever met your grandmother? No. Everyone always leaves after they finish their protectorship. And you were never curious as to where your grandmother went? Or your great-grandmother? I mean, I assumed they went on to become adventurers. Or, you know, live their lives as freely as they want. Spread their wings, you know? And no one ever speaks of them? I mean, you've, you've traveled the world a fair bit now, and you've not heard a single thing about any of them. Well, I'm sure they were secretive. I mean, my family has a million secrets. It's not unusual, really, in my opinion. I think... Hard swallow. (laughs) I think we both know that you feel what I'm telling you is true. You don't know how I feel. That's fair. I don't. And I'm not trying to assume anything about your feelings, then. But I just want you to understand the warning I bring. Solicity is hiding something from you, and the sooner you find out, the better off you'll be. Should I... should I go home? What do you... I'm sorry, I... I don't know how to talk to you, I don't have a name for you, I still don't know what you are. I'm I'm, sorry, but I have to be suspicious. I understand completely, and that's why I'm not asking you to do anything rash, I'm simply giving you a warning. But, like I said, I'm a friend, and I have your best interests at heart. Okay... Friend. But revealing myself now would not be beneficial to either of us. Are you in in danger? Do you I, need help? I am in danger, but I can't ask you for assistance yet. Revealing who I am would only make things more complicated. Okay. But I am taking a risk contacting you. What? I, I'm sorry, I don't want to put anyone in danger, but what can I do right now? Not for me, but for you. It's all right. I appreciate everything you're doing. All I ask is that you contact or speak with Solicity and try to find out the truth. And I want you to understand there is another way. There is a solution to this problem. Okay. How do I... I'll contact you again. I I have to go. Oh, okay. Be safe, friend. The voice is gone. Man, I have to go back home? Damn it. (laughs) I'm going to run down to grow. Okay. And kind of lightly pat his cheek. His eyes kind of start to crack open. What is it? Is everything alright? I want to go home. Like, right now? Can we? He blinks a few times. Yeah, yes, of course. He stretches and kind of like shakily stands up because his body's still mostly asleep. Yeah. He kind of cracks his spine a little bit and then steps out of the room, gets up onto the deck of the ship. Soul follows behind. A little too fast. So what brings upon this special request? I had a dream that I was being lied about with the protectorship thing, and I just want to make sure everything's okay. I just want to talk to my mom. Alright, sure, sure. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't have to. We can go back to sleep. Maybe no, this no. is stupid. No, I have I have the spells ready, like I normally do. <laughs> now it's going to be a one-way trip, so we'll have to catch up with everyone back in Yugas, I suppose. That's okay. All right. Well, are you ready? Sol is already going to stand up to hug him around the neck. He begins casting the spell. All right. So, Sol, you hug him around the neck, and the same sensation of swirling wind, and then you're in the brisk air off the ocean, and the smell of salt is replaced with a sweet smell of flowers, and the sound, mm. frogs, mm. and a Sol gentle kinda... warm breeze coming up off the cliff. Ah, home. Sol scoops themselves under Gro's shoulder and arm, and just pretty much already is starting to walk him towards his room. He's... I'm not an invalid. I was just tired. I know. I was just trying to help. <laughs> it's fine. Well... If you don't want my help, that's fine. <laughs> he pulls you in for a hug, kisses the top of your head. Mm. It's good to be back here, at least. Agreed. He rubs this a hand. This time it's just you and me, <laughs> finally. He gives you a smile, moves a hand down the side of your face, ends up like, pulling it under your chin, pulls you in for a kiss. Mm. Just how I like it. <laughs> your friends are nice sometimes, but they can be a bit much. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry about them. It's all right. I've got a cool scar. What? I've got a cool scar from, from your friends, so, you know, it's all worth it, right? <laughs> Again, I'm so sorry. <laughs> he just laughs and starts walking toward the house. So, of course, keeping pace with him as much as they can. Mm -hmm. He's still a tall boy with long legs. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not walking to get away from you. He's... That's good. He was still, like, holding on to you. That's nice. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you enter the first floor of your house. <sighs> so, did you want to try to talk to your mother now? Or yeah. did you want to wait till the morning? I'm at least going to see if she's awake. If not, I'll come join you in our room, okay? And Sol accidentally just says R. He smiles at that. I'll be waiting for you. Okay. He heads off toward his side of the house. Still a little sad when we say it that way. <laughs> Soul turns and goes to look in the common rooms that they normally find their mother in. Okay. You go around the house and you do not find your mother anywhere. There's not any of the common rooms. None of the common rooms. No. So if she's um, somewhere, she's probably in her own chambers. Alright, I'm going to go to her room and try to listen if she's awake or not then. Okay. You listen at the door. Give me a perception check. Okay. I'm very good at that. Hmm. <laughs> Are you now? I am. Nat 20. 36, baby. <laughs> All right, Nat 20. So you get a 36 on your perception check, and you listen at the door, and you can hear the steadied, controlled breathing of someone who is meditating. Uh, I don't want to bug her while she's meditating. I'll wait until the morning before I have to go. All right. So I kind of do a swift heel turn and walk back to Rose in my room. All right, you return to the room, and you find Gro has already stowed his travel clothes, and he's getting ready for sleep. I'll quietly come in and close the door as quietly as possible behind me. Do you want to try to remain a detective from Gro? Yes. <laughs> Stealth check, please. Okay, that's a 34. And Gro's going to get a perception, which he cannot possibly succeed on. <laughs> so you are able to sneak right up on him if you'd like. I'm going to hug him from behind. You hug him from behind. As he's hanging up some things. He holds your hands with his and then leans his head back so it's next to yours. Hi. Hi. That was a fast conversation. She was meditating and I didn't want to disturb her in the middle of that, so... Hmm. I'll talk to her when we wake up. That sounds alright. You sound alright. He turns his head slightly and kisses you on the cheek. <laughs> he straightens up and turns around. At this point, he's pretty much just wearing, like his undergarments, mm -hmm. and he'll give you a full hug. Mm. So I'll happily hug back. He nibbles your ear slightly. Oh. I mean, we are back home, after all. That still doesn't change the fact that Soul gets embarrassed so easily. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> and Soul kind of lightly lets one of their hands go down his back, fingertips only. Yeah. He's going to do the same to yours. Oh no! My one weakness! <laughs> Why does no one else have a weakness compared to me? <laughs> Would you like them to? 
I always want people to have weaknesses that's for me to discover. <laughs> <laughs> Just like with the electricity. It was fun. Yay. <laughs> so Gro is going to sort of kiss a bit on your neck as well and sort of start to walk you over toward the bed. <laughs> I thought you were super tired. I got enough sleep. Liar. Oh, you want to play your instrument for me? <laughs> is that what you want? I have an instrument you could play. At first, like, Soul's smiling because they're having fun, and then they have one of their few wish moments. They've been getting a little bit better, but they have wish <laughs> moments. Where it's just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, which, which one? It, ne- never mind. Oh. Kind of sits you down on the bed and gives you a kiss on the mouth. You know, even though we were just um, <clears throat> spending time at the hot springs, it feels like it's been forever. Hmm. That was that was last night. But I know. Today has been a very long day, and I can't think of a better way to end it than with you. Thank you. Soul reaches up and pulls grow towards them with kisses. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to probably undress you at that point. Yeah, I'm still in my travel gear, so that'd be nice. Dude, I'm gonna take a bath in the morning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what Any... a fucking holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Any particular requests or requirements for the night? No, not, not particularly. Just... Okay. They you wanna get... be every part of Gro currently. Okay. You get the sense that Gro is being extra tender with you tonight. Tender? Yeah. Oh, huh. what a sweet boy. Right. So, some hours will pass, and you wake up in the early morning hours. I didn't have a dream. You did not have another dream. Yes! Okay. <laughs> so it's like, alright, maybe I'm normal. You wake up pretty much at first light, and you wake up before Gro does. Okay. He's laying there next to you. He's laying on his side, you're laying on your back. He's got one hand on your chest, and he is sort of has a smile on his face even while he's asleep. Man, could this boy be any more of a cinnamon roll? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna roll and kiss him on his cheek, and then roll out of bed. All right. Do you want to try to make an effort to not wake him, or does it not matter? Oh yeah, for sure. I, w- I want to have him rested. Okay. He had a rough yesterday. Then in that case, make an escape artist check. Ooh, since I've never made that one before. Since he's kind of kind of got an arm on you. 22. 22. All right. You're able to slink out of bed without being noticed. All right. I'm on my way to find my mom. Mission mode. All right. I'm assuming you want to put on your house clothes? Yeah. Okay. I'll look more proper. All right. You head out and you find some of the servant staff as as awake and they bow to you as they notice you. Good morning. They return uh, your greeting with bows and... uh, you end up finding your mother at the breakfast nook. Good morning, mother. She looks up. Oh, so Yana, I didn't realize you would be home. Well, I didn't either, but yesterday being the day it was, well... Hmm, <laughs> young love. I tried to say hello to you last night, but it seemed like you were already meditating, so I didn't want to disturb you. Oh, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> Did everything go well? And Soul kind of looks around, and then they pull out Teresa's ring. This is it. Got it. Well, then, there's only one thing left to do. That's true, but I'm not sure if I'm ready yet. What does that mean? Not in the sense of, I don't want to do it, but rather, I want to make sure I'm strong enough so that I don't have to worry about any shortcomings on my part when I face him. Hmm. Well, I suppose that's reasonable. But... Well, as far as you... I know, that's the only plan for current. Well, I'm glad you were successful in this. Thank you for reporting it back. You're welcome. Shouldn't be too much longer. I'll keep you safe. And Sol kind of reaches a hand out to hold on to their mothers. She takes your hand, gives you a gentle smile. Do you mind if I eat breakfast with you? Please. She gestures to a chair next door. Sol sits down. Is uh, Daddy home at all? She shakes her head no. <laughs> Can't expect him to be here all the time, but it's always nice seeing him. You no more sit down when three servants will kind of come out of the woodwork and lay food in front of you. Thank you very much. Soul directly talks to all of them. They say nothing but just bow deeply and leave. 
And Sol turns back to their mother. So, is everything in order then? I believe so. Things are going well. At least on my spectrum, things are well. Actually, I've been having a lot of weird dreams lately, though. Dreams? That is strange. Yeah. Um, Have you not been meditating? I do sometimes, but I accidentally slept once and had a nightmare, and, well, I've been a little curious since then, and they keep happening every time I do sleep. Look, it's best not to go that route. (laughs) What do you mean? It's better to focus on inner discipline and to use the time of meditation to reflect. Well, Dreams tend to be simply irrelevant manifestations of our own memories and desires and fears. It's not... It's, it's not a good use of that time, and it's one of the things that, well, I'm frankly glad that we can do as a people. I can't imagine having that happen to me every night as a human. Well, I don't know. I, I think it's kind of fascinating to me, at least. I've never had a nightmare before until recently, so I don't know. It's just got me all curious, I guess. Well, if you ask me, I think your time is better spent reflecting and meditating. Right. It'll keep you sharp. Actually, um, I was wondering about something. There's been a lot of talk about family lately with my friends. Mm-hmm. And, well, um, people, humans, tend to have more of a generational, where they know their mothers and their grandmothers because there's such a short amount of time. How come I never really knew about my grandmother? Oh, well, she's... Well, I'm sure. She, you know, when she passed the powers on to me, she departed, and, well, I'm sure she's off enjoying the world. Yeah. I just always wondered what happened. I've never, since I've been out and about, Make a sense heard motive. anything. Oh, yeah? Make a sense motive. Okay. Uh, 31. <laughs> you get the sense that she is not telling you the whole truth. You get the sense that she's hiding something from you. Well, you know, I just did wake up, didn't I? So, mother dearest. (sighs) Soul, like, makes a face for a second. But, really, what happened to her, though? You must be in contact. She's your mother, after all. No, I actually haven't been in contact with her since she imparted the protectorship on me and left. Uh Uh-huh. This is something you really shouldn't trouble yourself with. What's important is that you have a good meal, and you are well rested, and you're ready to take the protectorship. Oh, I'm ready for the protectorship. I just, I guess I just want to know everything that involves, because I really don't want you to go after, you know, the protectorship. I know it's tradition, but what if I could make things better for you, for you to stay? Well, perhaps I'll stick around for a short time and make sure you're settling into the role. Mm Mm-hmm. But... I do miss the world in some aspects, and I think it would be good to get back out in it. Just as I'm sure you will be when it's time for you to pass it on to your children. (laughs) Who knows if we'll still need the protectorship by that time. Hmm. Maybe they'll have defeated the enemy by then. Perhaps, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. We're Uh safe here. (laughs) We're protected here. We're well respected here. Things will be better. I have a question for you. Mm Mm-hmm. If I did something wrong to you, would you ever be able to forgive me? What do you mean? I guess, well, recently I scared you quite a bit. Well, I think it's more of your friends scared me a bit because I thought you were making a terrible decision traveling with them. Look, I'm kind of on your end there, Mom. Mm -hmm. But I don't have much choice right now. There's more things at stake. I understand what it's like to not have your choices of things. She says with kind of a sour word to it. Sometimes we don't get to choose our destinies, but we make the best of them that we can. (sighs) Can you... Can you tell me what it's like? How it feels when everything happens? Is it going to hurt? The children? What? Wait, what? (laughs) Do you mean... Mm You mean the the, the transference of power? Yeah. Oh. (laughs) She laughs. laughs. Well, what did you mean by children? She thought you were talking about childbirth. Oh. That if it was going to hurt. 
No, they they weren't even thinking that, but now they're like, what? what <laughs> <laughs> Wait, should should I prepare for this? What? Wait, is that gonna hurt? <laughs> oh shit. She says that it feels like both putting on like a heavy coat, but at the same time being ten feet taller. So it's it's both a additional responsibility, but it also makes you much bigger than you are. So it's an odd sensation when it happens. Huh. Will it hurt you to release that to me? I'm sure I'll be fine. Makes sense motive check. What do you mean, mother? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that is a 38. You get the sense she's hiding something from you. Mom. (laughs) Yes? I hate to talk to you like this, but you're a terrible liar. Excuse me? You're not telling me everything. I understand you have your secrets and it's natural for you. All my life you have never accused me of lying before. What's gotten into you? I've gotten smarter. And that was a very cut and curt way of saying it. Her smile disappears and becomes a bit of a frown. I'll not have you disrespect me in my own home. I'm not disrespecting you. I'm simply stating facts. I have gotten smarter. Look, I don't know where this is all coming from, but I will not have you disrespect me like this and get away with it. If you want to continue your quest, you will treat me with respect. Mother, I do respect you. But I want you to respect me, too, by telling me everything. This conversation is over. Mother. She looks at you flatly. Go tell Gro to send you back and be back here for the Equinox. She can do it. Give me a second. I gotta think about this. (sighs) Do I want to use that spell? Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. I'm gonna try it. Fuck it. (laughs) I'm going to try a dominant person on my mother. Wow. I want you to say that. I need the truth. I need you to say that one more time. I need to hear those words. Should I? I'm scared. Oh, you already said it. It's happening. I I want you to say it again because I want to hear it again. I need to dominate person. I need to use that spell on my mother because I need the truth. All right. So, Solicity gets a saving throw. Yep. I'm so grounded. Well... Yeah, um, (laughs) because I think I've told you before that she's one of the more powerful beings you've ever met. Yeah, I kind of didn't think about that right now. (laughs) I'm so angry. So you cast a spell on her, and she just goes from being curt to being furious. She stands up, how dare you? And when she says that, (laughs) the room, like, vibrates when she says that. Like a small earthquake has just happened throughout the house. Yeah. Soul's on the ground. She's like, like shaking with anger. on ang- the floor, hands yeah. and feet. She is like shaking with anger. They're scooting away. In all my life, I have treated you with respect. I have tried to train you. I have tried to mold you into the best person you could be. And this is how you behave. I'm going to send a message to Grow while this is happening. <laughs> okay, what would you like to send to Grow? Help. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up and help, please. I need to get out of here now. Bring my clothes. <laughs> Soul's still scooting backwards. Their ears are down. Their scared child again. So this is what I get for letting you out into the world. You become an insolent child. You need to learn respect. Mama. No, not another word out of you. <laughs> you are unable to speak. Soul's got fight or flight, and it's flight currently. They're hastening <laughs> their movement away from their mother. Man, they're scared shitless right now. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Just wanted an answer. Your wedding is in a month. Transference of power is in a month. One month. You only had to make it for one more month. And you had to throw it all away right at the end. Can I cast invisibility on myself? No. <gasps> oh no! They require speaking. And your your mouth is just not working. Can I try to get up to run? You can try to stand, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try to stand up. You stand up shakily. She's like, you're not going anywhere. We are going to have a conversation. Sit. She points to the chair. 
Sol looks behind them and then slowly walks to the chair and sits down. She's not going to sit. She's still standing. She's got her hands on the table. Now, tell me what has gotten into you. Can I speak again? Yeah, yeah, you can speak again. Okay. I was told you were tricking me, deceiving me, and all I wanted was the truth. The truth is more complicated. It's best for you to simply believe what I'm telling you, all right? I have the best interest of the world at heart. I do too. You obviously don't. How could you try to take control of my mind? I just wanted you to tell me the truth. I just wanted to make it so that whoever told me that was wrong. I don't want it to be true, but you're making it seem like it is. And it's scary. It is scary, Soliana. But it's also what we have to do. It's our responsibility. Has this girl come in yet? Is he even awake? No. You don't, you, have, you don't know. You never got an answer. I want you to tell me why I shouldn't keep you in your room for the next month and a half. Because those idiots are useless without me, and I currently have the totem to kill Glar. And if he comes here trying to stop things, we have the one thing that can kill him. I feel quite comfortably safe now. Sol looks scared. You... you need them. They're strong. I'm stronger. And I have that. She points to the ring. Which means the only person that could stop our plan is at our mercy. So, I ask again. So puts the ring in their bag. Why? Why do you feel like what you have just done should be forgiven? (laughs) I... I haven't been able to think straight lately. Soul looks down. Um, some things have been happening that I don't understand. Um, maybe, maybe there's something wrong with my head. Well, then it sounds like you need to stay here and get your head straight. This is your home. I can't, I can't leave them, Mom. They're gonna come here for me no matter what. Even if you keep me here. Your friends or the enemy? Yes. Well, I'm not concerned about either of them now. Because I have my daughter, and I also have the totem. Alright, it's time to bluff. (laughs) (laughs) Alec, may you you be my spirit animal right now. (laughs) I know you think it's fine. If he comes here, we can defeat him. But I'm trying to defeat him faster so he can't tell anyone else about you, about us. I don't have all the totems for the rest of them. I only have his. If you keep me here, you're putting us in even more danger. She looks at you hard and says, I wish I could trust you, but you just attacked me. I'm sorry that I did that, but I'm so tired of people not listening to me. It makes me so angry. Well, in 35 days, everyone will listen to you. And then, you'll simply have whatever you'd like. Alright? All you have to do is make it to the Equinox. Get married, say some words, get the transference of power, and then you get to be in charge. But until then, you need to listen to me. I know Soul's really stressed right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is there any way for them to make themselves sick? With the puke? Yeah. On command? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you want to just vomit. <laughs> okay, so you want to try to bluff your way out of this? Oh, yeah. Okay, give me a bluff check. Mom, I don't feel so good right now. That's a 32. <sighs> Go to your room... And wait there until I dismiss you. I want to be with Grow. She says it again. This time the words kind of have a weight to them that you find irresistible. You bitch. <laughs> Go to your room and wait there until I get you. Soul runs into their room. They ran. They're upset. Yep. All right. You run to your room. You shut yourself in there. And you find it's exactly like creepily as it was the last oh. time you were there. What do I do? 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 Oh, fuck. 
need someone, anyone, friend, voice, whatever you are, now would be a really good time. Someone. It's hard. Soul is pacing around the floor. You hear something, like a whisper, like a perception check. Uh, 30. Okay. You hear a whisper in the back of your mind. It says, it's hard to talk to you here. I'm so sorry. Can you hear me? Barely. The words are coming in from as if they're so far away. I'll try to think louder then. (laughs) It's hard to reach you. Are you alright? I'm near my mother. She's shut me in my room. That would explain why it's so hard to reach you. She wouldn't tell me. Of course not. She's lying to you. All I asked was her to tell me the truth. I don't know why that would be so hard. How do I get out of this? I... I can help you. Please, get me out of here. Save me, I don't know. I'm sorry you can't hear me very well, but I can't stay here. I I have things that I need to do to protect people. I can... I can help you, but you need to trust what I'm about to tell you. I can... I can give you the power to protect. The same kind of power that your mother is going to transfer to you. But hers is corrupt. Hers is poison. I... I don't know. Why would you give something like that to me? Because you believe in this place. You want to protect the world and you're willing to fight for it. That is incredibly powerful. You have been groomed all your life to become a protector. And that, that is something that is rare in this world. I believe that you can do great things given given what I have to offer. Do you... I can help you get out of your house. Let's call it a, a gesture of good faith from me to you. Can you get me back to my friends? Yes. Do it. I need you to listen and follow my instructions. Okay. Do you have something sharp? They were technically wearing their house clothes. There's probably scissors on a desk. Okay. Yeah. So did... I've got something sharpish. All right. Gather everything with you that you need before you leave. Okay. I'll have something sharper if I have everything I need then. All right. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Do I just call out to you, friend, or...? Yes, just concentrate on the sound of my voice. Okay. I can do that. I won't let this link drop. I promise. I'm here for you. Thank you. At least someone is. All right. Soul's going to be patient and wait to them. All right. A little while later, there's a knock at your door. Who is it? It's me. Oh. Soul comes to the door and opens it. You see Gro standing there. He's like looking, like glancing up and down the hall. What happened? Soul gestures him inside, closes the door behind him. He steps in. What? What's going on? I made my mother upset. What? What happened? I asked her to tell me the truth about something, and then she didn't. And then I tried to make her tell me the truth. What? What do you mean? I tried to make I her tried tell you? I tried using a spell on her. You what? That's... You tried to control your own mother? I just the pro- wanted to know. The protector? Like, you know how powerful she is. What would... Look, what made... Just... What would make you think that would ever even work? I don't know. I was frustrated and angry. Are you grounded? Yeah, I think so. Uh, for how long? We we have to stop Glarv. Um, Mom doesn't seem very concerned about that right now. Uh, She's very frustrating. Could you, um, if you have time, bring me my clothes and equipment? Sure. All right. I'll I'll Thanks. be right back then. Okay. And so you- like. Gives him a quick kiss. Yeah, you, you, I cheek. was gonna say you, they both lean in. And he was going for the mouth, so it was kind of oh. a, it was kind of a mouth cheek kiss. <laughs> this oh. is a cute giggle. All right, I'll I'll be right back. He steps out of the room. Thank you. I love you. His head pops back into the room. I love you too. <laughs> the door closes, and you are again alone with your thoughts. Saul's happy expression is faded to gritted teeth in anger. <sighs> At least Grow gets it. Woo! All right, so Grow leaves, is gone for about five minutes, and then there's a light knock at your door. Who is it? It's me. Soul opens the door. 
You see Gro holding your pack and your clothes. Thank steps you. in. What are you planning? <laughs> Leaving? Uh, the soul's already like taking their clothes off to put on their adventuring clothes. Gro starts to blush as he's watching you undress. There we go. Okay. Uh, let me just enjoy this for just one more second. <laughs> Gro, give me my clothes. Uh, sure, here you go, of course. <laughs> he ends the motor. Soul holds him for a second and then just looks at him for just a little while longer to give him that little marshmallow. <laughs> hmm. All right. And Soul kind of goes back and starts putting on their clothes. You uh, didn't make any comments about my new outfit at all. It's outstanding. Uh, Thank you. I thought of it myself. Really? I didn't realize yeah. you were a designer. I had some help from my friend Billy, hmm. who is an enchanter. She really liked your handiwork with my eye, by the way. Oh. Oh, I'll have to meet this this Billy. Yeah, she's in Dareham. I should take you there sometime. I'd like to see it. It's a little chilly. <laughs> and maybe a while before we get around to getting there again, I guess. Yeah. I look forward I guess to it. So. I look forward to seeing the whole world with you. Agreed. So and Soul's like half dress gives him another kiss on the cheek. So what would you like me to do? Stay here and be safe. And if you ever want to spend time with me, just give me a call. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. I've got a plan. All right. Well, I trust you. Don't get in trouble with mom. I'm enough. <laughs> uh, probably this little gesture is probably going to get me into a boatload of it already. You could uh, run away with me. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you'd be all right with that. I think you have too many goals. If the two of us just ran away somewhere, I think you wouldn't ever be able to live with yourself. I know. So I'll... I love you. He has, like... Again, his eyes are a bit wet looking, and he's going to step up, and he's going to plant a deep, long kiss on your mouth. My boy. Soul. Yes, bro? I'll be waiting for you. I love you. I'll he, come back. He touches foreheads with you. You can't keep me away. I'm too stubborn. I believe that. So he steps away and wishes you luck with whatever it is you're trying. Soul waits until he leaves the room. He departs. And they go finish putting on everything. And then they take out their switchblade. Friend, are you there? Yes, that was touching. Uh, right, you were still here. I I'm so sorry. No, it's it's good. It's so good. That That is the kind of love that a protector needs to have. I'll be the best one, then. I don't doubt it. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah, I've got my pointy object. What do you need me to do? All right, clear a space in okay. whatever area of the house you're in. Also, uh, soul starts to push their fucking bed. <laughs> <laughs> Clear space. And make sure you aren't interrupted. Okay. Alright. Uh, how big of a space are we talking here? Maybe four feet across. Alright. Soul pushes their bed a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you clear a their space. Their room's big, but they just want to make sure. <clears throat> yeah, so you clear a fairly large space in the middle of it. Alright. He instructs you to kneel down in the middle of that space. Okay. And he says, I need you to use the use the sharp object on the palm of your hand. I need you to draw blood. Okay. How big? How much? I'm going to send you an image. I need you to draw it. Okay. Soul cuts their hand. Alright. You cut your I'm hand. Ready. You deal one damage to yourself. Whoa! But just enough just enough to open a cut and get some blood flowing. Okay. Um, That's not as bad as I thought it'd be. An image will flash into your mind. You don't recognize what it is, but it you don't recognize what it does, but it, it's its some sort of arcane symbol. Okay. He needs you to draw that on the floor. So I imagine I actually cut my right hand. I'll take my left hand, which is Soul's dominant hand, mm -hmm. and draw the symbol. Okay. By, you know, swiping their fingers in the blood yeah. and going about it. It's not too difficult to do, but the symbol is large and, and rather intricate. And just in case you're curious, it does not remind you of any other symbols you've seen. Okay, cool. That's groovy. Yeah. So you write it down on the floor and all of the intricacies that are in it. As the image sort of stays in your head, as he's, this friend of yours keeps it there. Within, okay. we'll say, five to ten minutes later, you're finished. You've got it all written out. All right. I think I did it right. Good. Can you see what I see? Not exactly. Okay. 
I get a sense of what you see, as if it's through mist. Well, you, I hope I did it right. <laughs> you seem so far away. Well, I, hopefully this will make us closer, huh? I think it will. So, All right. when you're ready, I need you to think of where you want to go, and then I need you to touch that symbol and hold on to it. Okay. Can I, can I just think of my friends? Is that good enough? Yes. Or, okay. <sighs> Soul kneels down and touches the symbol with a vivid thought of, well, Vera mostly in their mind, but mm-hmm. Karis. Mm-hmm. A little bit of Levette. Mm-hmm. A little, very tiny amount of Petrie. But okay. Vera is the most vivid in their mind. Alrighty. I would like you to make a spellcraft check. Oh, no. Oh, that's a 25. All right. You place your hand down in the center of the symbol, and as you do and think about your friends, the symbol takes on a light, like it begins to glow with a red hue, and you feel heat come off of it as whatever magics you've inscribed have activated. You feel the world around you begin to tear apart and open up, and for a moment you find yourself hovering You almost feel like you're floating, and then suddenly you drop as if gravity's reasserted itself, and you Uh land on a wooden deck. Oh, shit. Uh, Am I... I'm above deck, right? Yeah, you're on the deck of a ferry. You notice that you're smoking slightly. Like, you just... Is my hair okay? (laughs) Yeah, you you touch yourself, and you're not on fire, but you're smoking as if you just have gone through a very, very warm place. Something that was just singed you for, like, an instant. Make a perception check. Okay. Oh, that's a net one. 17. Yeah. You, you kind of smell like a burning kind of smell, but you're not sure what it is. But it quickly dissipates. Soul looks back down at their hand. Still pretty there's a, or... I mean, there, yeah, there's like a cut across your palm. They kind of close the hand and, and they smile to themselves. Now that was cool. I'm glad you liked it. You're still here. The voice is much clearer now. In fact, it's more <sighs> clear than it has been before, even. Oh, interesting. Thank you. It's quite all right. I'm... You saved me and other people as well. I intend to help you save the world. I think this will be a good partnership. You want to be partners already? Well, <laughs> hey, um, that's not. I mean, I just. Whoa. Um, sorry. I'm just. Uh... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Please. Soul's like blushing madly. <sighs> Look, uh... I figure you've done that for me, so I figure I would like to share something with you. What do you need? (laughs) Nothing. I wanted to let you know what you can call me. Oh, okay. Call me Ish. Ish. Mm Mm-hmm. So... It's a a nickname I I got a long time ago. Okay. Ish it is. If I ever need you, do I just think that? I figure I won't be that far away. Okay. I think that sounds good, Ish. (laughs) Good. Well... I have a question right before you go. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Of course. If I wanted to do that again, do I have to contact you, or can I, can I do that myself? That was a bit of my power. Uh, Okay, I understand. I want you to know something, though. That, that can be your power too, if you, well, if you decide. When the time comes, I, I'd like to offer you an alternative choice. I'll keep an open mind for you, Ish. That's all I can ask. <laughs> Thank you. You feel alone in your own mind. And yet, I feel stronger than I ever have before. That was so cool. <laughs> Fuck you, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> you you can... can't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings us to the morning of the 16th. A very eventful day. Mm-hmm. All right. And that is where we will <laughs> conclude. Holy shit. Thanks for listening. As always, special thanks to Protagonist for the theme music and Emily Roll for Fantasy for this episode's soundtrack. Interested in following us on social media? Follow us on Twitter at CheckPleaseDnd. Or want to support the podcast and be part of the Czech Republic? Go to our Patreon under Kanishra. Please leave a like or subscribe if you want to see more content like this, 
and leave a comment if you have any suggestions. Until next time.